we have a whole presentation prepared for you guys in a video. So you guys mind sharing your screen? Yep, let me get the sharing going. Um, and I just turned on the recording. Um, so we'll have it for everyone who is not able to make it today. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Everyone can see that screen? Great. Okay, let's start. So like you guys already know, probably we're Gaia or the Global Action Impact Association. And what we're aiming to do is organize a national competition where you guys design and prototype sustainable solutions that can actually be implemented in developing countries. Our whole point here is that we're trying to promote global sustainability and build a better world. So the way the competition works is essentially every year or so, there's going to be a different theme focusing on the United Nations sustainability goals or the development goals. Um, and what our organization does is essentially partners up with NPOs and NGOs in developing countries who are already kind of doing something similar to that so that they could actually help us launch these prototypes. This year, we're working with a community partner in Peru called WindAid, and they essentially make wind turbines for electro electric rural, rural electrification for the community in need there. Great, so our goals here are basically to create meaningful, measurable impact at a global scale, while also emphasizing both engineering and social considerations. Um, I think our whole thing at Gaia is that a lot of what education stresses to us is that we can do stuff, but now we're taking our education one step further and doing something tangible with it. So not only is are you kind of getting that learning experience from Gaia, but you're also kind of having that application side, which isn't really taught. Also, students were taught only to learn and not necessarily make impact, whereas we're stressing both sides here. Um, and then lastly, we, lastly, we just want to grow students' interests in global sustainability and careers pertaining to that because as you guys know it's really important nowadays and especially with like you know the environmental concerns that we're facing mm -hmm. so what makes us different from other organizations or sustainability competitions so we have that engineering excellence side i believe where there's a competition involved, we're all designing, prototyping, testing, and executing solutions for global sustainability. There's also that humanitarian side in actually having an impact at scale, you know, prototyping stuff that will actually directly benefit a community like Engineers Without Borders. And then lastly, you're kind of getting that real impact at scale, like I was mentioning, more of like the entrepreneurial side with startups and NGOs and actually forming these teams to execute sustainable solutions. Okay. Um, so those of you at MIT have definitely already heard this, um, but for the Cornell competitors, so the phases of our competition this year are going to be in, there's two phases. The first phase is going to be in the fall and spring, and that's kind of your designing and prototyping phase um, where you'll get together with your team and you'll decide which parts of the competition you're going to want to do and like which designs of the three that we have you'll want to compete in. And then in the summer, we have the implementation phase, which is where our teams actually go to Peru and have the opportunity to um, implement the winning design. This is kind of a breakdown of the timeline for the year. So in November, we have our teams forming. We have the kickoff event, which is what we're doing right now. 
um, our problem statement that's going to be released in a few hours tonight on our website, and then our updated competition rules will also be announced. And then our phase one work period is going to be from November to March. And then at the end of March, the deliverables are due. And then late April, which is probably going to be like the weekend of the 20th or the 27th is going to be when the competition is. And then in May to July is the phase two work period. Um, and then also the implementation of the winning design. And then Becca has um, a chart that kind of goes into that in a little bit more detail. Yeah, so here's a Gantt chart that shows the suggested timeline on the engineering side of like what a successful competitor timeline might look like. And so today we're at the competition event. Um, you guys can spend the next week or so like really reading through um, the problem statement and the rules, deciding on which subsystems you're going to compete in. Um, and then spending the rest of the semester from like after Thanksgiving until winter break in like the lit review brainstorming and planning phase. And then there's a little bit of break for while everyone's uh, away for winter break. And then starting in January, that's when the design um, should really kick off. So a couple of weeks on the conceptual design side, um, a couple of weeks on the detail design side, then getting into the semester, February and March, going through the whole uh, design and testing process. So purchasing materials for the prototype, assembling that prototype, testing it, um, collecting the test data that will be um, required for assessment in the competition, and then a couple of weeks to make improvements, work on deliverables in April until the competition being, um, as Katie mentioned, at the end of April. Okay, um, so for team formation at MIT, I know that you guys have kind of already met um, or at least met with Becca a little while ago when she was up in Boston. Um, so all applicants from the same university are gonna be, become a team. Um, you guys will be meeting regularly either online or in person based on your availability. Um, and then we as organizers are gonna be in touch with all of you fairly regularly throughout the process, just checking up and seeing how things are going. Um, and we'll also offer office hours with some of the mentors um, and the judges for the competition. And then Becca is going to be implementing some technical tutorials as well in January and December um, for the teams. And yeah, especially for Cornell, the Cornell competitors that are here, we have a lot of you in kind of like a couple different like places right now that haven't really met. So pretty soon we're going to be sending an email to all of you that are interested and then having an actual in-person meeting here, um, hopefully with all of you being able to attend. Yeah, and so diving into more details on like what the actual deliverables are. Um, so there's a bunch of deliverables which are outlined more in the rules statement. Um, and then at the actual competition, there's presentations. So, um, like written report documents, and then a one hour technical presentation, a 10 minute non-technical uh, pitch, which is more with the audience of like the stakeholders. And then jumping into the score, the score is based 25% on the documentation, 25% on the presentation, and then 50% on the quality of the design itself, how much impact the design can achieve. And the way that is calculated is described um, in more detail in the rules. Um, but basically, things like reducing the cost, increasing the performance, increasing the reliability, um, increasing the manufacturability in a local context, um, all of these things contribute to the design's expected impact rating. Um, and because Gaia has such an emphasis on the impact really matters. It's not just about having like a flashy presentation or like a well-written report. Um, if the design is really not implementable, then it won't be selected as the winner. And this year's problem statement. So um, as Mark was describing at the beginning, we're partnered with Windy Institute, which uh, fulfills the challenge of, addresses the challenge of rural electrification. 
um, in Peru, which right now 15% of rural households still do not have access to any sort of electricity. Um, their current energy needs are fulfilled by uh, kerosene and other fuels. And so we want to help Windate address this with locally manufactured small wind turbines, um, of course, built locally in Peru. And Windate has a lot of experience working with communities um, to build these wind turbines, but their design is not necessarily optimized. And so us having the engineering expertise um, are able to um, help them provide uh, more high quality electricity access for these families in need. There are three parts of this year's challenge, um, three subsystems to focus on, the electronics, the aerodynamics, the blades, and the generator. So the electronics is required because Windade has identified this as their area of greatest need this year. <clears throat> and that entails um, specking out, or sorry, designing a custom charge controller, specking out and sizing battery, integrating sensors, um, having a state of charge indicator on the battery so that families can know what their, uh, how much energy they have left in their battery and particularly having emphasis on local sourcing of the electronics um, to address one of the bigger issues with what Windade currently does is they have a charge controller that is sourced externally um, from abroad and that introduces a lot of like time and cost overhead for them. And then the second challenge is on the aerodynamics. So we have two different blade designs that Windade has been using um, so far, and we want to be able to help them decide uh, which of those blade designs is better for the, their application, or if there's some sort of combination of them, um, basically using the results of test data that uh, Windate is conducting tests in the next couple of months, and we'll release that data um, as soon as it's available, and plugging that data into an aerodynamic performance model using that to improve the design of the blades. And in particular, it's not only the theoretical design, but like what it actually produces given the uh, manufacturing process that is available um, on site in Peru. Um, and there's more details on that process in a later slide, but it's a, basically a carbon fiber layup. And then the third challenge is the generator, um, also called the alternator. And so that similarly, when it has been using two designs, um, an axial flux and a radial flux design based on just the direction of the magnets. And so we again want to use the performance data of those designs and propose a um, optimal better design with emphasis on how the generator is interacting with the blades because there's no use in having a generator that can produce more torque than there will be on the blades um, as well as efficiency. And so here's some more diagrams sort of showing the existing like baseline solution that Windade has on the electronic side. Um, on the left is the uh, wind MPPT, which stands for maximum power point tracking charge controller um, that they use for their battery. That's the one that is externally sourced. Then there is an electronics box. You can see in there, there's like a Raspberry Pi, some other low voltage electronics, um, and then a diagram of like a monitoring system and then on the blade side, here's some pictures of the manufacturing process. Um, it's a layup with a foam core. Um, they infuse the resin and it's wrapped in carbon fiber. And then it gets like sanded and painted and everything. Um, and so it can be difficult to manage the uh, like geometry of the blade. That's really important from an aerodynamic perspective, um, how much uh, lift we're able to produce. And so redesigning these, and then finally, the generator. Um, when it makes their own custom generator, winds the coil themselves, um, puts in the magnet, puts in the steel. And so uh, this project involves working with like both the simulation side. Um, here's a screenshot from a finite element magnetic method simulation that was previously done on their design. And then a picture of like their empirical test bents, um, which is what the 
data that they're taking in the next couple of months is going to come from. Um, and so teams will be using that data to inform um, what the design should be, um, especially on that decision of like axial versus radial flux are the two different architectures that they have been exploring so far. And so in the problem statement, we have more than 30 different technical resources for teams to draw on, um, just some of which are shown here in the screenshot. And so we really encourage teams to like go through each of them. We tried to organize them um, really well so that it's clear um, which subsystem each of them pertain to. And um, so you can really dive in and understand um, both best practices in the wind energy industry, as well as what the baseline design is that wind data is using so that we can best um, help them to make the new design as best as it can be. And then I'll hand it back to Katie to talk about the competition. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so I kind of talked about this earlier and touched on this earlier, but the competition is going to be in late April. Um, the last two weekends of April, we're still deciding on which one based on Cornell and MIT's final schedule. Um, and it's going to be a single day event. And then it'll likely be in the Ithaca area just because that's where all of our organizers are. Um, and you guys will be judged on your perspective impacts based on the rules um, and the problem statement that Becca is going to be sending out really soon. Um, yeah. So this is kind of a logistics page. Um, each team is going to be expected to apply for funds through their own schools um, to design and build their prototypes. We do have um, connections with grants at each school that we can um, kind of help you guys set yourself up and apply for. So we won't just like leave you hanging to find your own money to fund your projects. Um, and then in addition, at the end of the first comp at the end of the first phase of the competition over the summer, eight students um, are gonna have the opportunity to participate in a funded trip to Peru. Um, it doesn't have to be from the winning the winning team and they will implement the winning solution. So more information about the second phase, which is um, the trip to Peru to go with Bundade. Um, once again, eight students are gonna be traveling to our partner community in Peru and they will implement the winning team's design. And then after the implementation phase, the teams will reflect on their impacts that they've made for the community. In addition, there will be like weekly meetings um, and weekly check-ins with the guy organizers just about how everything is faring. Um, yeah, and then also if you're interested in coming to Peru, regardless of whether your team wins, I am sending out a Google form right now. If you could fill it out, um, that would be great. It'll be, I believe we're looking at um, the month of June right now for the trip. Um, and then just indicate your interest because we're kind of trying to get a head count on that relatively soon. Okay, and then we have a video um, testimonial from the like our biggest team last year, the British University in Egypt. Um, so we'll play that. Hey, Katie, I can't hear any audio on that. OK, um, let me make sure that I'm screen sharing with audio then. Computer audio. How about that? No, I can't. Okay, we might just send out the video afterwards. Um, it'll be posted on like our social medias, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, um, the video is uh, the British University in Egypt team who competed last year talking about um, their experience in Gaia. Okay, um, this is just a slide about our current competitors. We have teams at MIT and at Cornell. And then this is kind of the next steps 
um, join our Slack if you have not already for the guide competitors. We'll send out this presentation or a portion of this presentation with like links um, and appropriate Google Forms and things to fill out in an email later tonight. Um, and so that'll have like the link to the Slack and then also link to Google Forms to fill out. Um, so then deciding your team structure and leadership, which is something that once you like figure out, you'll just have to tell us about, just send us a quick email about like who your captain or leader is gonna be. Um, and then, in addition, declaring your challenge participation. So as Becca talked about, there's two optional designs. Um, there's a Google form that'll just say like, we as the MIT team wanna design the generator um, and you just opt into that part of the competition. Um, and then reviewing the rules, problem statement, technical resources. And then Becca and the technical team here will have technical tutorials that are gonna be scheduled in the month of December and January. Um, and yeah, those are the next steps for now. And then also when we get the video working and have the link and everything watching the BUE video. Yeah, and more about the technical tutorials. Um, definitely upon request, I can talk about like whatever you guys want the most instruction on, but I'm probably planning to do one on like each of the different subsystems. So an electronics one, um, a generator one and a blades one um, where I like walk through in general the fundamentals of design and like what sort of things you like start thinking about um, and then later in the spring semester as you get more into your design um, we'll be able to have more in-depth feedback sessions and connect you with like mentors who we have connections with in the industry um, to help improve the designs even more. Yeah, so that's all we had slide wise. Um, so I'll go back out and have an opportunity for uh, Q and A um, from all the teams. Um, hi there, I'm Mateo. I'm from Cornell. Um, I was curious, how long and when is the trip to Peru, like supposed to be? It's four weeks and it'll be in the summer. It's a little bit flexible um, as, so Katie just sent out that Google form to indicate your interest. So we'll sort of work with whoever's interested based on like their schedules and one day schedules to figure out exactly when, like whether it makes the most sense to be in June, July or August. Um, but yeah, it's one month out of the summer. And so it should still give people the opportunity if they're interested in like internships, for example, um, since it's not the whole summer, um, and especially because you can plan ahead for it now um, to be able to go on it. And so that trip is the part that's uh, funded by Gaia. We got a question in the chat. How can I join the Slack channel? Um, let me send the Slack invite right here in the Slack. Um, I think we've sent it out by email, but. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so Katie just sent out that link. Um, and so in the Slack, actually, let me just uh, share my screen with it. Um, we have channels for each team, um, Cornell MIT, and then we also have channels for each of the subsystem. We have generator electronics and blades. And so these channels are like a great place to ask us questions. Um, if it's a question that you have that uh, is okay, like a question that you're okay with like the organizers and the other teams seeing and like we can have discussions here, um, and yeah, definitely we want to make this workspace usable for everyone. Or like a quicker communication than email.
Yeah, thanks. I just saw a couple of people join the Slack, so great to have you. Alrighty, it seems like that's all the questions we have. So we'll send out these slides and a recording for to share with your teammates who weren't able to make it to this kickoff. Um, and then we are very excited to release the problem statement. Um, check back pretty soon as we just have to like post it onto the website and then you'll see like the full um, PDF document that has a more in-depth description of all the technical design requirements and stuff. And so we'll be looking forward to, um, I guess, next steps, filling out the form with what subsystems your team is interested in, if you want to do either of the optional ones, um, and then filling out the form for the Peru trip. And as always, definitely just reach out to us with any questions, um, either in the Slack or on the email. Okay, thanks for showing up everyone. Um, you'll be hearing from me soon. I'll send emails to like everyone and then each individual team with the next steps as well. Um, thank you so much for attending today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.